right. Welcome to our Monday stream. Let's get move some things out of the way on my desktop here. And we'll get started. So today's stream, hopefully you guys can hear me. I've turned my mic on this time. Uh, today's stream will be uh, us looking at some, obviously some life drawing, some figure drawing. Uh, we're going to look at some negative space today, drawing the envelope around the object rather than the symbol of the object itself, in this case, um, the human body or body parts, so that you get used to seeing the exterior of the shape as well. Hey, Erica. Thanks for joining. Uh, so we're going to look at that for the first little bit. <clears throat> and then we're going to look at some volume study where we're going to turn some of the body parts into some basic 3D primitives so that we can get used to thinking about these forms as volumes, as forms, not shapes, not flat shapes as much. So we're kind of going to be switching gears a little bit there. Um, so yeah, let's get started. When we get started with figure drawing, a lot of the times um, when you're in a figure drawing class or an atelier, uh, you're going to want to warm up. Just like if you're going to do some exercise, you're going to want to warm up and not jump straight in maybe to um, pressuring yourself to get things right. Uh, just to loosen up your shoulder, your hand, to not be so, let's say, precious with the strokes um, straight out of the gate so that uh, you can keep the strokes loose and, and kind of work up to something where we're going to be taking a little bit more time. Hey, Chris, welcome. I'm having my coffee here. It's a decaf. I have to make sure that uh, I don't have too much caffeine as my heart starts skipping beats, that kind of thing. Uh, probably shouldn't be drinking as much coffee as I do, but hey, I love it. I love it. And decaf, you can get some good decaf, right? It doesn't taste gross. None of that uh, instant stuff. I don't know. I've had some instant coffee before. and It just tastes like tar to me. Some people really love it, though. I don't know. Okay. Let's find our stylus. Drop it on the floor. All right, so I'm going to switch over to the old um, the old stream here. I'm just going to drop in our model from last week. So uh, thanks again to Mario for letting us use this from uh, Virtual Pose. Uh, and so we have our model here, and we're able to turn her in space. So. I mean, you can open, I, I mean, everybody can have reference. You can very easily Google figure drawing reference for free online. So make sure that you're doing that, if you're, especially if you're following along or you're using this time to also uh, get in there and life draw. Um, of course, for Twitch, they're very, they're very restrictive over any sort of nudity. So we can't show that. The reason why I would go for a nude model if it's if it doesn't offend you is that you can kind of just see the actual kind of structures of the human body, male or female. Um, and then even within that, you're going to get a lot of difference between body types, potentially. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's really good to kind of just break down those forms and really know what lies underneath uh, the, uh, the forms that you're going to have to be drawing when you're creating those uh, characters, um, creatures even that might have some anthropomorphic elements uh, so that you're not kind of, I mean, you could make it work, I suppose, with clothing on. Um, it's just like the foundation of the structures is, is really what you want to be seeing. And so even when we're looking at our, our cloth model here, um, we can start to see some of the uh, the different elements of the body. I mean, most of what you're going to be able to detect are the landmarks that are created by bone and muscle, right? We do get hair, obviously, eyebrows, eyelashes, uh, hair on top of the head, mustaches, if uh, if it's a guy, um, 
or hey, some women as well. Um, so, so that's sort of what's happening there. Not often are we going to ever have to delve into too much vascular um, parts of the body, that being sort of veins. On some, some bodies you'll see, um, like my feet, for instance, are very veiny. Um, some people's hands are, some people, their arms are, even like their necks, you'll see some veins sticking out of that. So those would be the only other physical structures that you would tend to see as volumes a lot of the time. Uh, sometimes you'll get veins under the skin, which will be a pattern or, or what we could think about as maybe something a little bit more flat, right? Um, so those are the big things. So we want to know what's working in there. Um, a big part of it, uh, of that understanding is like, we can't really take the skin and uh, muscle off of the body. That would not, that kills the model, right? Um, so you, you want to be knowing what those shapes are. You do have to resort to looking at reference for that skeletal reference, knowing where those shapes are, what they look like, how, where they're positioned, right? And, um, the proportions of that so that uh, those things are a little bit more clear for you and then wrapping all of the organs and flesh over top of that um, really kind of paring this down to the mechanics of the body right rather than kind of just you know the, how to draw an owl you draw a little circle in the middle and then this other thing that can be a valuable way of, of getting to a finished kind of look for a character uh, creature but we do kind of want to know why the body is this long and why that part is fleshy and that part looks hard or rigid, right? Um, for male and female bodies. Uh, so it's always good to know that. But, you know, we can deal with that here. The The model still is is very useful to us in, in this regard. So we can see a lot of what's going on with her. And so that's going to be who I start out with today. You guys can pick anything. I mean, we're going to move on to, I've taken some pictures of my hands and my feet uh, in different poses. So we'll kind of take a look at those things. These are other elements that, uh, or considerations, let's say, of what you should be looking at when focusing on life drawing. Of course, the whole body is really good to look at um, in a holistic sense. But we do focus a lot on hands, right? Head and feet. Feet tend to be covered up with shoes and socks and whatever costume elements more often, I find. Um, so the hierarchy for me would be head, hands, and feet. So we'll look at uh, hands today and maybe some feet just to break things up. But I want to start with some really light, uh, quick sketching. So I'm going to be turning the pose and sketching just loosening up. I might focus on certain elements of the body and uh, so we'll take it from there. More coffee, of course. Uh, okay, so we'll just start out with, uh, let's grab a brush. We got some dry media brushes in here. Let's see, let's see how some of those play. Sometimes when uh, your brush is, is rough or like this scumbled, broken texture. It can be a nice way to not, again, be precious about your line work. It's sort of, it's just loose and scratchy and allows you to kind of make whatever marks you need to make um, without uh, starting to think about it as like finished line work, right? So, uh, one other thing, I've, I'm working with a 22 inch uh, screen for my Cintiq. Um, I try and make the, I mean, I could hit the F key and make it as big as possible in there um, to get the most space to draw. Um, you know, the nice thing about hitting the F key, hit it a couple times, you'll be able to hover over the tools on either side and they'll pop up for you. Um, but it's a nice way to kind of just, you know, get those things um, out of the way and just be able to focus on, on the, the canvas there. So, you know, just kind of, I'm not going to time these specifically, but I'm just going to go fast in the beginning. You can time them 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Um, and that will be a good way of making sure that you stay quick with those poses. I'm just going to go fast to start, um, but that can be something that you do. So we're looking at the, the model here and I'm just going to start to get a sense of, 
of that form being as fast as I can. I mean, within reason, kind of just getting the, the gist of, of, of the pose, just of the body in there. Get the head kind of coming forward a little bit more. Um, I'm actually going to take it off the full screen just so can I, I can have access to my layers so I can make multiple layers and not delete things. That way we can kind of look at them all at the end. So that was pretty quick. We can do it again. And uh, one of the things that might become a little bit of a distraction for you in, in this phase is uh, trying to make pretty artwork, right? We kind of talked about this last week where we weren't really that interested in the final, um, the final look of the artwork. We we're more interested in uh, working out um, some of the hand-eye coordination with the blind contour, right? So just being really quick with that stuff. If you get trapped in kind of making these things precious and you're not really loosening up at that point, right? Especially if you find yourself starting to just move the fingers, right? Instead of even just the wrist. We want to get away from these, these things in here and, and use this whole thing here, that, that plotting arm, right? Just like a uh, computer plotter. So just having fun, kind of loosening that stuff up. It's really great when you're in a life drawing atelier because like it, you're physically there, you can hold that charcoal or Conte or willow stick in your hand and you know, you can feel the texture of the paper and, and get that stroke. If you're using big newsprint, um, you get a lot of room to play around with that, right? So I re if you guys can do it, um, then make sure that you do, um, at least even at home, right? If you have something up on screen, just get a big piece of paper, uh, get away from the Cintiq now and then, or the, the tablet now and then, just so that it's, it's more about training this and this, right? Without all the power and the hot Cintiq underneath the, the hands there. Um, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to kind of loosely, I'm zooming in in my mind's eye to, to the hands to try and get kind of a, a sense of the hands in there. All right, so just roughing out what the hands can look like uh, against the hip, right? And name of the game is keeping it loose. We'll move, I'm going to move the model around a bit. I might even start to look at the head in here. And so that face into the jaw. You can maybe detect it, not so much in, in the stream um, with this camera, um, minimized such as it is, but I'm, I'm kind of trying to keep my arm loose and just swing through that space in there, right? And <clears throat> Part of my my training in fine arts uh, allowed me to work a lot on um, abstraction, and and so that was really nice because I I wasn't having to be so beholden to um, to reality really, uh, but it, it allows you to kind of be a little bit more loose with things and and kind of track where things are going right and. Um, but let go of them to to kind of be a little bit more expressive in there. So, you know, that, that's, uh, that can be freeing, right? Especially if you're just trying to warm up with something like this. So we'll uh, move there, move her around again. Do a back view of her. And really loose with this in here. Just warming up. Get all those cobwebs off from the weekend. Depending on where you're from. If you're from Australia, it's already been <laughs> Monday and now you're into your Tuesday. Which is always, always weird to think about. It's hard to wrap my head around to the future. I mean, it's not really, but it is. Um, I 
I'm really liking the the kind of stroke of this um, the specific pencil. We've got an HB here. Let's see how that feels. That one's a little bit more rigid. All right, natural edge. This is an eraser. I try even some wet media. Let's see what else we can find in here. Well, maybe it try something that's more of like a chalk. That's a strange brush. Maybe not use that one. I kind of want something that feels like a Conte stick where one edge is sharp and the other is a little bit um, blurry or blended. Uh, to simulate the the way <clears throat> the way I'm holding the pencil. Um, I don't want to mess around too much in there before I find something that works. But that's kind of nice. Maybe we'll go with something that's a bit blunt like that. Let's see what this one is. I dig that one. Let's try that. We'll back up all of those strokes so that we don't I am kind of being a little bit precious about these, but just because I want to preserve them for the end. But uh, yeah, so so that's nice. This kind of feels fluid enough. It's uh, some of these brushes are sampling so much with texture and other considerations from the brush engine that it can slow down a little bit. So the simpler the brush is, the the faster it will draw. But uh, like you can see, maybe a hint to slow down in this guy, but that's not too bad. Um, <clears throat> so we'll move her around. We'll get kind of some of the side view going on. So just trying to establish back kind of into the chest in there. One of the other things that that's good about this faster way of drawing is you also start to build a sense of proportion as you connect your mind to your hand. Um, which uh, sometimes just takes a little bit to, to get to kind of working right. <clears throat> but uh, we're not too worried about it because, again, um, we're just trying to stay loose. And so some of these marks are, are, are nice and abstract. That little heel back there. Kind of see her face in the front. She's got a little bun on the back of her head there. Um, that gesture's kind of flowing through her. I'm kind of looking for this flow, this S-curve in her body. While still trying to keep her body kind of balanced over top. Because that's in the, another one. I'll do like a, a headshot front view. forehead up there room for that hair the ear a little bit higher up slowing down a little bit here to get some of these features but uh, allowing myself to still stay a bit quick with it It's some really beautiful drawings when you get into kind of loosening up in your life drawing. Um, see something that uh, that's happened in the initial drawing for for this one was that uh, the initial shape that I made for just the face. Uh, you could see me kind of pushing that line out more and more to get a more accurate read on her hairline. Just need more more room for the dome in there. Maybe sometimes that you make it a little bit too small. But 
So she looks like she has uh, microcephaly, I think it's called, where the head becomes really small. All right, eyelids in there, cheekbone a little bit in there, right? Um, seemingly, I mean, there's there's a messiness to it, but but we kind of get in there and, and feel kind of what she she might look like. So looking pretty good. Let's see if we can see a side view. Well, sometimes it's really good to draw weird angles, right? Like I'm gonna draw this back side three quarter of her head so that I can see sort of uh, how some of that face will look out in front. So we'll get kind of gonna establish the dome of the head a little bit more here. And then I'm gonna get into the um, side of her face. Get that nose kind of coming straight out in there. That eye peeks out from there. A little bit of that brow ridge. Into that, uh, so drawing some of the shapes of the bun, even right? Why not? If we if we're just loosening up, then you know this what we're drawing. A lot of the times, it's not super important as long as you're trying to kind of target some verisimilitude between your subject matter and what you're drawing. <clears throat> terrible of running out of canvas yeah it's um i think everybody has their own weird idiosyncrasies with um the canvas itself um something else is like the edges of the canvas for me are very distracting a lot of the time so you know, I'll sometimes you might see me if you were to watch me draw a lot you might see me resize it either the artwork or the canvas um, just because it's a very hard edge and especially if you're painting or drawing on a white backdrop or ground um, it's very stark right so it can be it can be quite distracting sometimes <clears throat> So we'll kind of get back into here and just get some of that. It's not happening. We got her shoulder kind of popping up in front of her face. The acromion process is uh, that little bone at the top of your shoulder. <clears throat> um, the more muscle you have, the kind of more it it uh, it covers that up. For me, it's I can feel it, but muscle kind of dovetails into it for for my shoulder right if you're of a, a smaller kind of musculature then it's more likely you'll see that protrude right as a little kind of bump and on this uh, female model you it, it's protruding a little bit as we move into her deltoids right and you get kind of like the the span of muscle into her um into her back or shoulder blades and their scapula that arm comes out of the back there so yeah, it doesn't feel too bad. We get that that uh, kind of this nice sweep up into the uh, um, cheekbone, and then for uh, just indicating lightly the uh, eyebrow for her. Um, and so we'll just kind of pop in and see what it is I'm drawing in there, right? Uh, one of the things that I want to target when I'm doing this and uh, is the angle um, of thrust or, or alignments that you can see in, in the face there. Trying to kind of get that going in this direction in here if we were to kind of look at that as a degree for her face, right? Um, degree of tilt in her face. So that can be something that I start heaping on some attention to detail with is uh, that kind of thing. So um, it just depends on sort of like the session that you want for your for your life drawing. Uh, you could probably very easily um, spend a ton of time doing just what we're doing here with really rough, rough, rough line work. Um, 
and and see you know if, if a, a nice long session like that will get you loosen up enough right um i think for our purposes we'll kind of we'll we'll move on from that now into uh some of what we want to be paying attention to now and so let's grab our let's grab the model again virtual post model so I'm, I'm just going to take a, a snapshot of it. Um, so we will open up this and then we will copy that and paste that just so you guys can see that there. Make her bigger. So. So being that this is the model that we're using, let's go grab a red. Just so you guys can see it, pink red. So when we get into, now that we're loose and we can actually get into the, um, the task at hand, the, the whole idea behind negative space and then looking at that negative space is to remove the habit of drawing from memory symbols of human bodies right um and instead practicing what say the space around the body in here looks like if i were to kind of break this into quadrants right what does that quadrant in there look like this quadrant down in here right what's that look like i'm, I'm being a little bit loose on the bottom there but uh that'll work for us right sweep in there and then the last one up top here like so so that, I mean these these are specific looking shapes uh, the exterior edge of the frame is obviously just square um, but when we look at the interior portions of that they start to have some interesting uh, elements that we can obviously detect and make sure that we're drawing. Um, and, and when you, when you are doing just general observational drawing, you can have your mind switch between the massing say that we looked at last week. Um, and then to the contour that we also looked at last week to the negative space on the exterior of the object that we're looking at now, right? And so I can kind of combine all of those things as I'm witnessing the subject matter and I can put those together and know if I'm getting something uh, more incorrect because there's more sort of vectors to test whether or not I, you know, what I'm seeing is being translated well. <clears throat> so say if we were looking at the, um, the backside of her arm, if I were to draw a straight angle upward from there there is a certain degree of angle to that arm that is uh, positioned on her hip. Um, and, and so I know that if I flatten that out too much or make that too vertical, uh, it's not going to be representative of what I see. Um, you can convince people. I mean, a lot of our rough sketching was, was not specifically perfect. Right. But, you know, over time doing this enough, you'll kind of get, closer to that stuff. So you'll be able to kind of achieve that look. Um, so there's that, I mean, paying attention to something like this little bump in here. Um, that's important because it, it's there, right? It indicates the, uh, the traps on the back of her, her, her body, right? That those are muscles, right? It's not just something that I'm, I would sweep up into her neck as a generalization. I might do that if I'm making some stylized representation of her. Um, but in this case, we can detect this volume in here, right? Of, of that muscle as it leads into the scapula. So, um, so that little bump should be there because it's indicative of a volume sticking off of her back, right? Um, that she does actually have muscle. Uh, as we get up into the head, there there is hair in here, but it does sweep pretty uniformly down into the neck. Um, so that's where I generalize that shape. And then up into the bond of the hair. So that sticks off of her head in a certain way, right? So 
we can we can get in here and just draw the negative space when looking at the model or the subject matter and see if we can start to kind of achieve a, a look of that negative space. Even the interior spaces, right? Say the space between her legs is sort of like this pizza slice look that has a little bit of a curve to that edge and then pinches up. It's of a certain width, of a certain height, right? That ratio is something that we can pay attention to. And the same thing can be said for the space between her arm and her body that she's making in there. So a nice curvature to the rib cage at the back, right? And uh, we see sort of the contour of the forearm, the bicep for her is, uh, it's, it's not something that I would draw from memory. And this is where you can kind of get trapped in, in, in drawing symbols, right? You're thinking, oh, that's her arm. And then you might just go straight towards drawing a bicep, right? And then you're thinking, you know, like a, a muscular man's bicep and then maybe like some bigger triceps on the back before we get the, 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 um, the arm kind of disappearing up into the, uh, the deltoid, right? So that wouldn't be correct for her. And, and that, but that would be maybe something that you're accessing because maybe you draw a ton of males or females. Uh, I run into that a lot with students is certain students will indicate it's like, oh, I draw a lot of female characters or I draw a lot of male characters and not female, right? So your characters can maybe start looking a little bit beefy when you switch um, to a uh, trying to achieve a different body type, right? And that's all just habit that's been built. So if, if you feel that, it can tend to be that you're storing these symbols rather than actually thinking about what the structure looks like. And so, you know, if you had to switch and draw a female and then a male, you can then go look at reference and actually translate to this. Okay, well, that looks like a softer form, right? Or that the biceps aren't as kind of intense <clears throat> on that uh, that body. And hopefully you'll get it right more often, right? Especially with practice. Um, so, so that's what we're gonna do with her. Um, maybe we'll start to pull out some of the uh, hands and feet. Um, see what kind of shapes we can get. Cause the, there'll be some really interesting shapes say with the hand. Um, because of all of the negative space in between those, right? The shapes that we can make. But we'll start with her. <clears throat> so we're gonna get rid of this stuff. Turn that off. And uh, I mean, the, the format of the model is a little bit longer than it is wide. Our canvas is a bit square here, so, um, you know, what I might do is just kind of slim that down a little bit. And I'm not looking for this to be like perfect with the the uh, the shapes. I'm just, I, we started rough with our sketching to, to loosen up. We can start rough to kind of get the idea of, of what we're looking for here as well. So I'm going to start sketching in that shape from the top thinking about the form as it moves down the body in there. Get a little bit of a sliver in between the feet. Get a little sliver under that leg. And then we get into the uh, little pizza slice in between the uh, the quads or the uh, hamstrings. And then on the outside edge, I'm going to, let's just kind of complete that. <clears throat> I'm going to draw in from the, the other side here. Get down into the hip space in there and then we can come up from this section draw our other quadrant to the top 
Okay, and we'll get that other, get that arm in there. Okay, so not too bad. I mean, the head starts to look a little bit goofy. You know, we can imagine kind of drawing a face in there. It's got kind of really big nose, big lips, right? Um, as an abstraction, it could look pretty cool, actually. But uh, it was not my intention to draw any of the interior stuff. And, and I am really just trying to recognize that exterior, uh, those exterior forms. So, um, so that's what we get. We get this kind of interesting look at this volume in here. I'm just going to follow those lines as I've laid them out. All right. So I did, uh, I did a better job when kind of tracing over top of her, but in the spirit of not being so caught up in the um, perfect representation of these forms and instead kind of thinking about the shapes outside, right? These guys in here, um, it were, it's, it's getting there. Right. And, and I'm kind of training myself with, with that shape or with these shapes. So let's, uh, let's go with, uh, another shot at this point. I'll, uh, I'll probably switch to some, I'll go grab an image of a hand in here. So, Here's my arm and I, I, now that I'm kind of tuning into that, I start looking at those forms a little bit more. This is, uh, I wouldn't say maybe contrast here than the, the model that we saw, but, uh, is definitely, um, easier to notice the difference between sort of the positive and negative space, the positive space being my arm, um, and then the negative space in there being those shapes. So if we're looking at these, maybe we'll move it to the side a little bit. And then we can spend some time roughing in sort of, let's go with just that top portion, right? What shape does that make? It's kind of like this really interesting form like that. Then we get this little one in here, this little space in there. And then up underneath. And kind of like bulges down in there. Okay. So we got this interesting form. Kind of make that a little bit bigger. All our little triangles in there. All right, we'll fill that up. Got my Cintiq on a, on an arm. So sometimes when I'm scribbling or filling things in, it's just like the whole thing's bouncing. So thankfully the camera's fixed to something other than my desk, but there we go. Right? Like it's, it's, uh, we're starting to kind of feel it a bit, right? Um, still very rough, but, uh, th there are those negative shapes. Let's try another one. Let's find one where we've got the fingers open. There we go. Starting new there. Okay. So, I mean, sometimes it can even be useful to invert, see what that looks like. Um, and that's just control I, if you're ever interested in inverting values, colors. I feel like the, the darker values against the, 
the ledger scanner just for some reason easier for me to detect the negative space. So um, let's start with uh, the side of the arm in here, kind of get this down into here, and then we get that shape, right? That then the one over by the thumb is interesting because that kind of just sweeps up into a form like this. Let's give that a little bit of a heavier hatch. And then if I were to go from the top down to the middle, we get something that kind of sweeps up in there. And then we get those those kind of feet, well, the fingers, but uh, those kind of sharper shapes. So paying paying close attention to what the scale of those actually are, right? Are they all the same? Uh, they're close. The the space in between the finger and the the middle finger um, are is a little bit larger than the middle finger, ring finger, and then. A little bit smaller is the space between our pinky and our ring finger, right? So I can kind of take a look at that and then make those adjustments as I, I go down in, in that direction there, right? Um, I'd want to kind of fill that in a little bit because I know my pinky finger is not that small. And then I can kind of close in that space as I kind of come up to the, the top in there. right not being precious i'm not hopping in to to draw my the the wrinkles on my hand or anything like that and so um yeah i mean that's a a pretty good representation of those negative spaces um i could finesse that but uh that's not what we're practicing we're not getting in there with the, the details so that's that's our our shot at that one let's see what else we can find in here has an interesting form. This one's pretty good. And this is something, I mean, I've taken this, uh, these images with my cell phone, right? So uh, if I can do it, you can do it. And uh, you can maybe if you have uh, a way to set up your phone, you can take images of yourself at full um, uh, as a full shot where you're getting the whole body in the frame uh, and then just I mean maybe I, I'm not sure I'm sure if cell phones probably have something like a sequential shot um, but you can just take a whole bunch of shots and just move around and make different shapes with your body uh, for some cheap and easy reference where you're kind of controlling what the pose is like a little bit more if you have a significant other that can do that for you or a family member that can do that for you that's a bit helpful, a bit more helpful because they can actually snap when you tell them to snap and then you can do different poses. But uh, that's just an easy one uh, for yourself, especially if you're you're looking for something very specific for a piece that you're going to be doing um, and you want to do some reference for a pose where maybe you're um, like pulling something or punching at a, uh, in a direction or pulling whatever it may be. Right. Um, that can be really good to, to get a bunch of that kind of reference going. Um, other than that, obviously, um, buying reference online, right, for those people that are selling it um, can be pretty good. You get some, generally, when people are making reference, they'll be, um, they'll be using nice lighting and, and thinking about that kind of stuff and, and also the silhouette, strong silhouettes, um, so that, uh, you know, you're not just drawing something where, somebody's hugging themselves and coming towards the camera because that shape is a little bit difficult to read in silhouette, uh, especially if you're doing kind of negative space stuff, right? So, so let's try this guy out. So I like this kind of shape in here. I'm going to kind of make it a little bit more rudimentary as I sketch that. Kind of just flowing off that wrist and then down into here. That space, that shape, or those shapes. Kind of up from there, it just kind of wiggles up and, you 
in here and then we get this kind of this kind of look to it. Then we get these weird kind of angular forms in between the fingers. Can't see the thumb so much. You just see the the edge of the thumb in there. Um, my rendition of it is is a little bit kind of rougher, right? Because I'm not. I'm trying not to resort to just drawing the interior contour lines and and get into that because that's not really what we're after here, right? So the mass feels all right. I probably sweep some of this mass down a little bit more. That original angle wasn't wasn't bang on. Um, so yeah, that doesn't feel too bad. Kind of gets the that those shapes that we're that we are seeing in here, right? Um, so that feels pretty good to me. Whoops. I am used to personally when I'm when I'm doing any sort of life drawing, I do tend to just erase it a lot. Um, for the, the reason that I, I don't show life drawing often, I mean, some artists, some fine artists, for instance, make that a part of their um, expression. Um, for me, it is just the kind of mental practice, the physical practice with the arm. And I don't really want a whole bunch of <laughs> PSTs full of all this life drawing stuff that I'd have to go through and curate to find anything that I would want to show, right? If I were trying to be creating um, a, a body of work that was a, based on life drawing, then sure, I would I would keep it. But for myself, I just have the canvas selected and I, I tend to just hit the delete key from piece to piece. I go faster that way then I'm not kind of considering, oh, it's a nice piece, whatever, right? So. But for you, I mean, it may be a case that you you want to keep it and you may be being a little bit more precious about it. Um, <sighs> holy crap, these exercises make me realize how rusty I am. Yeah. Um, and that's just it. And and I, I like to take the, the sort of depression out of it, if we could call it that, where you look at it, it's like, oh, it's not perfect. It's not bang on. Uh, by just knowing that it's not about that, right? These exercises, I mean, uh, I worked out today with a, a trainer and the first few say squats or, or deadlifts uh, are horrible, right? And you're fixing your form and you're kind of just working on, you're, you're focused on working out, getting exercise. Uh, you're tweaking these things and being cognizant of how you're actually moving your body uh, over time and then over time you slowly get better at it right as long as you practice and then that's that's the big problem <laughs> with exercise anyway for me practicing um but yeah it's it's just by removing any sort of uh precious quality or or that kind of worry about that stuff we can just have fun and do some pretty tragic <laughs> sketches right but slowly you'll start to see some that are like better than others and and just stay relaxed about it i find that if if you do start to heap pressure on yourself especially with exercises and they don't go well then you don't like doing it right so if you just remove any requirements or pressure um from yourself then it can just be like oh okay yeah i got some i got warmed up today and um, for me personally, deleting them is, is nice because then I, I know they're going away. It's not about that, right? Um, so why bother getting myself trapped in, in a space where um, I'm not actually doing the practical exercise stuff. I'm, I'm starting to just draw, right? The intention down the road can always be that this is for something, right? Um, for instance, if I were be if, if I were to be creating a uh, a character, say a male or a female character, maybe I go and do some just 
warm up sketching, some rough stuff as we did in the beginning, loosen up, then maybe focus on uh, a combination between your massing or your blind contour um, or say the um, negative space focus that we're doing here. Just kind of get a, that next level up of paying attention to certain things and then getting into actually sketching on your own, um, seeing how, how that pencil, that stylus feels now and see how those forms come together now that you've, you've looked at that stuff. So, yeah. Um, so that's our hand. Get rid of that guy. Let's just delete these two. Yes. I'll delete that guy as well. Um, I'm going to go find one more example of a hand. Maybe we'll go with something that's a bit more closed. I like this one, actually. This one feels pretty good to me. The limp wrist. Okay. So the usual, like I, I, some of them I was breaking up by quadrant. Some of them I'll just look at certain shapes and try and, and get that going on, right? Um, I might with this one, try and create the top portion of this frame. And uh, maybe what I do is just cut it off right there. I just kind of block in that mass at the top. And then I can kind of block in that mass down the side of the wrist in there. Um, maybe tilt that a little bit to kind of get this, this shape in here with the finger. Um, and then just this little sliver in here. And then this little bump, bigger bump. And then I got this kind of shape in here. I've gone a little deep on that guy and I've kind of encroached upon the rest of the hand, but again, Ah, well, right. We don't, we don't care so much about that. And then down into this space in here. My brush catches up. So the, this, this whole mass kind of came this way too much. And this little guy here can kind of popped up a little bit too much there. So let's, uh, let's delete that. Try it again. All right. Try and get that mass back in there. Maybe we'll just, without filling those shapes in, we'll just kind of create a whole bunch of smaller shapes. You're really abstract with it. strange shapes in there um, and I could maybe go in here at that point and just kind of start blocking those out see how those feel a little better overall I think just kind of looking at that the shapes in this case were were nice to to work with first because I kind of made them more interesting um, and move myself away from just drawing the arm as I saw it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and, and like, let's just kind of give this some loving up top. Let's 
fade off in the top part of that. So that, that that's a better expression overall than, than what we saw before, I think. Um, so you can see at this point, like maybe it'd be worth it for us to, to spend a bit of time um, doing a few of these, right? Uh, many of these in, in one session. So, um, so that when I go to some more of my reference drawing later that I, I can kind of work with that. So with that said, we eventually want to get back to um, drawing, uh, maybe switching gears back into kind of just drawing the contour maybe with this and having now that practice in the back of our mind can maybe access uh, a look for this that's a, it's a bit kind of more accurate, right? So we'll start with this and I'll start kind of just drawing the arm. I'm going to actually switch this brush. It's not contacting as well as I'd like. That's a nice soft one. So thinking about that shape in there. Which in trying to switch my mind over to the um, the negative space and, and paying attention to that as I draw these uh, these fingers, right? Angle of where that finger's leading to. Looking at this space in here, right? As I draw this thumb. And getting down into that forearm, meat of the forearm there. And kind of like trail that off frame. Not too bad, right? It's uh, some of those little bulbous portions of the pinky in there, nail on top of that. So, I mean, the, the reference is right next to it. So I get a little bit of help there by being able to switch back and forth between the reference and, and my sketch really quickly, right? Rather than looking away and trying to come back to this with memory. Um, so, you know, that would be probably another challenge at that point is to kind of get rid of, of the drawing or, or sorry, the reference being so close to uh, the drawing itself. Okay, so we'll we'll switch over to uh, the female figure again, and uh, we'll try try and get some of that going on. So for, for the image uh, of this model that I'm drawing, the space in between her uh, body and her arm is a really good thing to be looking at to make sure that I'm, I'm achieving the, the same kind of form. Um, so that's a good example, and we'll look at it after, but it's a good example of how that can help me 
understand if, if I'm getting that shape right, thinking about the kind of rest of her body, right? Uh, and then those shapes that kind of come from there. <clears throat> Simplify maybe a little bit of the hand. The leg kind of just drops straight down from there. So, um, you know, I. I can notice that in the negative space uh, while I'm drawing. Get those feet in the back, thinking about those shapes. We have a little bit of a sliver of negative space in between the uh, thighs. Just trying to get that looking accurate. The leg is going to kind of move almost straight up and then back into the pelvis before it, it turns at the iliac crest where her hands are sitting. So I'm starting to engage in a little bit of what we're going to look at next with uh, the volume development um, by kind of mapping her head like a sphere slash a, a cylinder um, so that I get the, the look, the angles of, of things uh, more correct in there. So get the, the lips underneath that hairline into the ear. Jaw moving up. And that chest into the shoulders, a little bit of armpit, deltoid, clavicle. And uh, let's see how we did here. Get that bonnet at the top of the head. Bit of belly button action. Just got some abs going on. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look um, at the model versus uh, what we got going on there. So um, we can see is really kind of focusing on say that negative space that we were talking about. Uh, in between the arm and the, the rib cage. And so it's, uh, it feels pretty good to me. It's, it's maybe a bit tight this way. It feels like the, uh, the elbow got brought in. So this, this could e expand outward a little bit more, um, but a fairly similar uh, representation of, of that form. The angle of the arm feels uh, in, in a sketchy fashion, fairly accurate. Again, if we move that arm out, then the forearm would seem a little bit longer, um, which I think would be a bit better for us. Uh, the hip, I've I've started to curve that hip. Now, here's the thing. I'm aware of the trochanter on a female figure, pushing out the hips a little bit and creating a curvature at that part of the body. Um, I've relied a little bit on my knowledge of that here, rather than just the observation right hers is not so curved hers drops down in, in a bit more of a, a flat fashion so you can see there's an example of me relying on symbol rather than observation right so you can see like maybe i would take a little bit more time to to break myself of that if i felt like that's an area that i need to adjust uh for her 
Uh, space in between the legs feels pretty good. The curvature had to do a couple times to try and get it in there. Um, I feel pretty good about that curve of the front of the leg, the, the quadricep in there. The, the brush is a little bit too blurry to be drawing the some of that detail when I press hard. So the fingers are completely impressionistic, um, but we still see them at that same sort of area. We get that shape in between the forearm and the rib cage, the breast up into that deltoid, and then of course that wedge shape in the face there. So let's just take another look at that. So not too bad. I've raised that shoulder way up. Um, I could drop that down to kind of create this nice triangular form if we were to connect the dots uh, in there. So, so yeah, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, the method that we went through to kind of get a sense of those negative shapes is something that you should try out and see by doing enough of this stuff if you can get a, a sense of, of the subject matter that you're working with. Uh, I might be doing this for vehicles, right? If I'm gonna be doing some vehicle sketching uh, in a certain time, understanding what a truck looks like in its negative space uh, or, or the space around the truck, uh, what, that, what those shapes look like can give you kind of more familiarization when, it, when you go to create vehicles and something just feels wrong um, now you'll have a better sense of what that is. Like the negative space doesn't normally look like that, right? Even if you're designing these weird kind of vehicles um, where you're iterating and, and being innovative and experimental, you'll still kind of feel like, oh, this is the shape I'm going to play with, not only the positive, but the negative and see kind of what that looks like. It all is something that you consider when, when designing anything is overall pictorially how that image comes across and negative spaces as much of it as the positive is. Okay. So that's something that we can do as we go through, uh, our negative space training. Sounds like you're going to be an astronaut. Uh, okay. So the next part is we'll, we'll kind of pull this hand back up. We'll move that guy to the top, start another, um, layer in there. So one of the things that you can do when trying to simplify <clears throat> some of the volumes in your piece is to break it down. Uh, this is something that I, I tell my students a lot is to break those shapes down, especially with the human figure um, in space as simple forms like spheres, cones, cylinders, cubes, um, to start at least. You can start creating sort of like generalizations of rib cages and skulls later, but uh, a good practice, say you're sitting there with your coffee, warming up for the day, is to kind of look at these things as um, these primitive objects. So we'll grab a red, we'll get a little bit closer to this guy and I'm just gonna draw on top of my hand here. Um, so if I were to just start kind of thinking about the, the volume of this hand, I could start building this out as a, a basic form, like uh, think of it as a sponge, right? Like a kind of like a bent cubic form, um, like sponges are a bit pliable, right? So we might see something that starts to look a little bit more like this. Um, the thumb, let's just erase that thumb area from our sponge. The thumb as it comes into this, uh, this first knuckle can feel like maybe a tapered uh, cylinder, right? So if I were to see that cylinder, it might look like something like that. The next uh, part of my thumb can be, it like, seems like a little bit more straight. So I might just make that a simple cylinder that way, okay? And then of course the end of my thumb, it doesn't end in this blunt cylindrical form, but it, it, it kind of tapers off and pinches on one side, um, rounds on the other. But if I were just trying to keep my life simple, I might just kind of look at that as a slightly tapered cylinder, right? You can rotate that maybe a little bit more that way if you felt like you needed to. So sometimes if, if that works better for you, for your understanding, then do that, right? So we have that form in there. 
<clears throat> we can do the same for the other fingers, right? And so I'll just kind of rough in what those cylinder shapes would look like. For each one of those. And then we'll take a look at the after we're done this and, and start to detect some of the contour on the reference that we're looking at and how that, uh, which direction that travels for us. Okay, this in here, kind of nice and simple. And uh, we can even do that with the arm. Now the wrist as it kind of leaves the elbow and moves up towards the wrist, um, it is a little bit more like a stretched um, rectilinear kind of cubic form, right? As it gets into the forearm, it can be a little bit rounder. So you could almost think of taking a, um, a sphere and, and squashing it a little bit, uh, making it more elliptical. So we could have this kind of elliptical shape coming out of here, right? Like a squished egg. And then out of that comes this kind of more square form in here. Okay, so that sort of just attaches to that in there. I'm just going to erase into that so you can kind of see the way I'm thinking about that. So we get that form looking like that. Uh, I can draw these forms as a beginning stage to developing, say, a character pose. Um, and it can help me understand sort of what that volume is uh, a little bit better than having all of the subtle nuance of the uh, curvature of the thumb into the kind of fattier or at least kind of padded part of the bottom finger versus the harder part of the top of the finger, right? Those are the end game uh, um, complexities of, of these things. We just kind of want to get the basic direction of the form and volume. The, the contour is going to be a great way to understand that. So I'm, I am going to go with a really basic brush from this point. It's going to be better for us to, uh, to kind of just be drawing more fine lines. Um, let's use like a blue. And so as we're looking at these volumes, they're not just flat, right? We want to get away from thinking of these things as just flat symbols. We want to think of them as their, their volumes that we've built here. And so you can start to almost build this wireframe around those volumes to get a sense of its, uh, its three-dimensionality, right? So I'm kind of drawing this wireframe around it with these contour lines to give us a sense of, of that shape. We, we remember that this was the square part, so I'm just gonna stay true to that. Maybe it was a little bit curved underneath, right? So I'm thinking about that. A little wireframe there. This part curving towards us, right, as that cylinder opens towards us, it would create curvatures like that. If we saw something like the finger move to the side, maybe like this middle finger, it's going to seem a little bit more on on the uh, on edge, right? Those those uh, um, curvilinear or those circular forms that roll around this thing, these contours as they move to the side, just like if you saw a cylinder from the side, it would seem more of just like a square, right? If we were to look at it on a page or picture, <coughs> a 2D um, ground. So as that thing turns towards us, we're going to see it curve more and more and more. If something turned, if I was pointing straight at you, you could think of that as being uh, us looking down the barrel of like a gun or something like that, right? That's going to be almost perfectly circular, right? Because it's pointed towards us. So sideways, straight towards us. We get these flat forms. At a three quarter, you're gonna to start to see or, or recognize those, uh, those contours there. <clears throat> um, saw that there, that's a great warm up exercise by hand, turned out he's better. Perfect, awesome. Um, so we want those curves to be in there and I'm being a bit loose with the way these curves are forming, but you can start to see that that helps me understand where that thing is in space and where it's moving towards or away from, depending on kind of what you're building, right? So um, it is good, especially for people that haven't done, if you find you're a, someone that hasn't done a, a lot of life drawing, 
this can be a really good way of uh, you're almost treating yourself like a computer at this point, like a wireframe um, modeling package. Um, and it's just a really great way to start to recognize volumes in space perspective, right? Um, and, and I can start to think about those things. So um, I'll just kind of quickly rough in some of the rest of these guys for you. Right. We'll even kind of give these guys some loving. Thinking about where that's traveling in space. You know, maybe it hits here and it rounds over that this way. This rounds over that. So sometimes if I'm, I'm designing a character or creature, I'll be sketching it and uh, I get to a problematic area of the body and I have, uh, yeah, I'm kind of struggling with it maybe a little bit uh, in that perspective. I will just resort to blocking it out very simply with these uh, geometric forms, right? To, to kind of feel um, what's going on uh, with, uh, with the forms in a simple way so that I can get on with adding, making sure that that looks good in that perspective space. And then I can get into um, adding all of the nuance of the flesh and uh, costume elements, maybe even later, right? Because I know what those volumes are now, right? Especially if I'm establishing it out of the, um, the back of my mind and not even looking at reference, it can sometimes be the case where it's like, okay, well, I'm not too sure on what that would be like, so I might as well test it out. I can kind of sketch some of that stuff in. Um, but there you go, right? So that's the way I'm kind of thinking about uh, drawing that uh, that shape, right? And so if I were to just go off on my own and create an arm, then I can start thinking about those forms in a very similar way. So I can draw that initial sort of squashed egg, shape the wrist coming out of that right and then we can have the our uh uh what's the word sponge uh coming off of that in there so i can kind of build that in and then i can start thinking about those other volumes right as those things are moving out of the hand thinking about building those tubes just to start so looks a little bit weird but uh we should expect it to since we're building these things out of basic primitives and I'll, I'll make this a bit more clear for you in a minute. I kind of think about how I'm working with the, uh, those shapes, put that thumb in there, have this maybe come towards the camera a little bit more. I'm going to have that kind of move out that way. Um, I'm going to slim that wrist up a little bit kind of just judging the proportion of it, seeing how it feels. And uh, we've got a, a really rough pass there. I can kind of turn that down, start another layer. And now it's it's sort of, it's it's been built for me. I can make rhyme or reason of the lines that I've put down, hopefully. If not, then get in there and erase some of them. But uh, I can start to detect those volumes now and start to connect the dots. I might make this pinky a little bit smaller in there. All right, something like that. Get that thumb out there. And we've got this kind of weird clutching hand now. up into the wrist give that heel of the hand a little bit more loving and we got something maybe some like death clutch we were watching the uh zombie um stream 
maybe something like that. Uh, I might even, uh, the, the pinky looks a little bit weird here, to be honest. So I might have that be something that's a little bit longer in there. Maybe it kind of moves in behind. So, um, yeah, and I mean, we can we can start to finesse that again and again, just to see kind of like what what feels best about uh, a pose like that um, by sketching on top and cleaning up some of that stuff. If I were to make it kind of zombie like I could have some more fun with it. I feel like moving this guy out just a hair more. Having that disappear in behind. Like so. Making it strange, maybe get a little bit of a nail in there. That kind of thing. Right, but it, it all spawned from this idea of, of those volumes being kind of represented first. Right, and then kind of getting in on top of that and creating some weird looking finger vibe. Give it kind of nails, maybe sort of like a demonic hand or something like that. Um, but there you go, right? So I've I can kind of start with something that is is a little bit um, more straightforward in terms of me looking at reference for a hand, building that reference out of volumes, and then getting in there and uh, almost kind of practicing it in my mind's eye, then trying it on my own for maybe a project down the line, as we mentioned with the negative space stuff, right? So that can be some fun stuff. So let's, uh, let's try it with the female model. Oh, move the canvas? Yeah, I can do that. I'll move it over to the side a little bit. There you go. Uh, okay, hopefully that works a little bit better. So we've I've got the model up. Let's kind of go and pick a pose here for her. So uh, I mean, something where the, the model is pretty flat to the camera is not going to be great for practicing volume, right? Something where they, they are three quarter, is going to be a bit, be a bit better because you're going to get a sense of the, the, the rear leg or the rear appendages moving back in space. So they're going to be a bit smaller. So we can kind of practice where the connecting points like the pelvis or the rib cage right? How, how they will span into the background. Part of this is knowing and having practice perspective, right? So knowing where your horizon line is, knowing that if you're looking below your horizon line, things are going to converge on either side, moving up towards the horizon line. If you're looking above the horizon line, then things will converge down towards the horizon line, okay, to those two vanishing points. It's, we can have a multi-point perspective, um, we learn about that in, in the course, um, but it's very important to know even basic perspective with these kinds of things, because what we're doing is we're using basic volumes, uh, to create, um, this sense of volume in space, right? So they kind of go hand in hand. Um, these volumes need a sense of perspective. Otherwise you can draw these wireframe lines, so you're blue in the face and if they don't kind of respect any kind of perspective, then it's kind of just like, okay, whatever. And it'll look weird and people will know that you're kind of guessing your way through it. So don't do that. Uh, okay. So I think, um, maybe be interesting to see kind of those legs in space a little bit. That's, that's kind of interesting. We'll go with that pose. So um, I've moved that off frame. So hopefully you guys can see it now. <laughs> uh, see the canvas. So I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm just going to start building 
uh, a sense of those volumes, even in a very basic way, right? I can iterate and tweak that stuff and fix it if I feel like it's going awry, right? But the, the idea is to kind of get that basic sense of, of the form. So um, a few different things we can do with that. You can maybe sketch out a rough outline, uh, a contour, right, of the character to make sure proportions are correct. And then you can simplify some of those structures down so that you're kind of mapping that perspective on top of these things now. So let's get into it. And I am going to kind of just maybe roughly sketch body in here. Kind of using my stylus at the end. I'm, I'm holding it at, at the end of it just so that I can kind of maybe get some rough outlines of, of the body in there. Another great way of just not making, not getting trapped in making precious lines, right? Let me move that head forward a little bit on her. I would say my favorite way of, of life drawing is by keeping things loose. It's just, it's so nice to follow the forms and the rhythms of the body, um, male or female. Uh, without getting into kind of noodling um, render detail. So that's why it's kind of nice to hold the pen or pencil, whatever you're using, the tool, drawing tool at the end, so you can't get into that kind of distinct detail. <clears throat> Be a bit more... expressive with it. So we're thinking about some of the exercises we've done today with the negative space, keeping an eye on things. Okay, so we've got a rough outline of our character here. I can drop that down in opacity. Maybe I'll switch to uh, black. And here we go. We just get into it and start kind of blocking out. Start another layer, actually. Start blocking out some of the volume. So her arm, the way it's positioned in the shot is kind of flat to the camera. So if I were building a volume for that, it would be a tapered cylinder down to the elbow, something like that. I mean, you could put a little sphere at the end of the elbow if you can make sort of like one of those wooden um, drawing dummies. But that thing's not turned towards me at all, right? And I would say the same is the case for her, uh, her forearm, is that's not turned towards me. It's sort of flat to the camera. So those two things don't get much of a contour volume that moves into perspective space. Uh, the hand does, it, it seems to be kind of like something that's moving up in that direction. Then that first set of fingers is going to be a little bit more flat to the, the camera. And then those other fingers start to maybe move away a little bit like so. The rib cage, uh, you can do something like a compressed sphere, or you can kind of simplify it as sort of an amalgamation between some spherical cylindrical thing to help yourself out. For me, let's uh, let's let's make it something that is a bit of a hybrid. So we get this kind of rounded shape for that rib cage in there. We can think about the torso as is something that's maybe starting to bend down towards the the pelvis. So that can be kind of like a flatter um, cylindrical form. We've got these guys kind of creeping around the side. We'll, we'll draw those as the spongy kind of uh, shape. Um, I'm not going to get into drawing uh, the breast yet. I mean, with breast pectorals for sort of male physiology or uh, breast mass for females are going to be a bit different. 
right? You can think of the kind of maybe pectoral on a male as being more of like a flattened, um, if we were to draw that in here, it could be kind of like a very faceted, flattened plate almost, right? And then you would draw the other one wrapping around the body that way, right? And that could be a nice way of doing it. Um, female bodies will obviously have pectorals, but that breast mass that's on top of that. So that would be a bit more of like a semisphere, for instance, just to simplify it. You want to keep it simple. You don't want it to be like you getting all the way into the nuances of what that looks like on top of a pec um, in the final drawing, right? So the neck is going to be something that is a bit of a, uh, I would say a cylinder that's open right towards the camera because we remember I can bring that down just so you guys see it again we can see that that if if she were a mannequin and we popped her head off you'd be able to see into the the joint for the neck right it's not going to be flat not like the arms are here so that's what I'm looking at there <clears throat> and uh, the head the head can be just a, a sphere maybe elongated down at the front um, for the, the jaw, right? Um, you can add a shoulder in here as a sphere so that that feels a little bit more like uh, uh, a deltoid. And, and on the other side, maybe we have another one as well. Okay. Uh, the other arm, we can barely see it disappearing, but it would be, if, I think, if it's moving away, we're just going to see it as a, cylind a cylinder kind of moving away. So it would look, it's kind of hidden right now, but it would look like it's moving away this way right? Uh, because her arm is positioned at that angle moving uh, in the other direction from the camera. So that's what we're feeling in there. The pelvis, the pelvis can be something that you just simplify this. You can make it kind of like underwear if you want to go a little bit more complex, right? Where we kind of like shave the sides off of a semisphere. Um, so that can be a way you look at that as a simplification. You could I mean, on wooden dummies, you'll see that as being more of just a sphere itself, and then the legs will be attached to that. Um, so if that's easier for you, you can just draw it as a, a sphere like that. For me, I'm going to go with the underwear just because the way the uh, pelvis works, it moves to the glutes in the back, um, and you get more of the rounding shape there on, on human bodies, right? So I'm just going to kind of give it that underwear vibe. I can simplify that. And then we're going to get the uh, the upper leg or the femur. And so I'm simplifying things, remember. It's, it's another situation where that mass is kind of flat to the camera, not really moving back uh, or forward too much. So that would come down to here maybe. We might get some slight curvature on the bottom because remember, I mean, the horizon line is probably somewhere up here for the, the character. So if I'm looking down uh, below that horizon, I'm going to see down into uh, a curvature like that. Um, and we'll, we'll get all of the uh, contours in there in a minute. But that's what I would see. Let's give it just a round sphere uh, for the joint. And then we get the calf or the lower leg. And so if I were to simplify that as a shape, then we would get that happening that way. And then the feet, um, you can kind of just simplify that. You almost, if you've ever seen those wooden feet that fill shoes out so that it makes the shoe voluminous and doesn't, the shoe doesn't sink, you'll kind of see that in shoe stores. Um, you can make that just a simple shape, um, maybe like a elongated sphere that's been cut in half, something like that. Uh, I suppose you could make it a almost like a wedge form like that, right? Um, let's just do that to keep it simple for you guys. There we go. Other foot would be another wedge form. It's kind of tilting in towards us a little bit. So we'd have something like that. And then that leg is moving a little bit more flat to the camera. This one's kind of got the contours moving that way, but this one would be something that's, like I said, flatter, right? So those those contours would be a bit more uh, on edge. So same thing with that other leg. That other leg is mildly moving away from us. Um, so we might see into the top 
portion of that tapered um, shape. And then you can throw the kneecap in there. Maybe we would extend it down a little bit more. Kneecap. So let's let's actually give that the joint up in here spheres so that we kind of fill in that shape. So we don't kind of, if we were to span skin in between these forms, it wouldn't look like it's sort of this weird scarecrow shape that has no bones or meat in it. Um, so that's that's sort of what we're we're looking at for the larger form. So if I were to get in here and start adding contour, you know, I would think about start with center lines on things. Right, run that down the center line of these objects, even these guys in here. Interior lines, so the outside edge as well. Okay, and then we can run those contours. So based on how we think that's sitting in space, we can start to add those curvatures. So if we're looking at something that's moving away from us, above the horizon or below the horizon, we can start to kind of position those lines in there. This one straightens out a little bit more and then starts to curve downward, same as the pelvis, downward a little bit more. This one's maybe positioned towards this a little bit flatter there. As I move down, I'm gonna to start to introduce more and more curve. This one looks like it's moving away from us a little bit there. And then we would get uh, something like that. Um, we'll just get rid of the rough sketch underneath. <clears throat> and we have something like that. Now, from there, we have that, that kind of shape. Um, if I know what, what these volumes look like, I can start to, when I get into rendering, I can actually think about the way the light would hit a volume like that, depending on where it is in space. Um, so it's a really good way of kind of just breaking these things up and, and kind of going um, in there and, and understanding those volumes. We've built the initial sketch. We've got the volumes. I can take this down now quite a bit. And uh, I can start connecting the dots on that even now. I can think about where maybe the ear will be <clears throat> where the jaw will occur, down into the neck, the trap into the shoulder, maybe the deltoid, rib cage, down into the hip. Think about the breast mass at that point if you want. Get those looking more accurate. Elbow into the wrist. This model does feel like she has really long forearms. <clears throat> to the trochanter on the outside. That hip in there. I can start to add maybe a little bit more nuance to some of the rhythms in the body rather than keeping them rigid. Something like that, the feet out the back. Those hands around the front, and then of course the top of the head. And then the bun, of course, why wouldn't we put that in there? Okay. And, you know, we, we've got the kind of formation of that if I wanted to keep going with the sketch in there, right? So 
started with this really rough mapping, then figured out the volumes and then kind of connected the dots. The volumes can remain there uh, to be a map for um, the, the, the form in perspective space uh, to help you out, right? So, um, you know, if I were doing a, uh, a character like a human or, or sorry, a subject matter like a human, it's a fairly complex form, right? So it is really good to practice that on here, but I can also do that uh, with the example I used before with um, uh, vehicles, right? Or uh, architectural spaces, just thinking of what the shape is, then breaking that down into some more simplified uh, geometric forms and, uh, and then kind of just so I can understand it better, uh, then I can start to kind of put anything I want over top. Um, do the basic contour lines with more detail. I can then get in there with my value rendering and, uh, and start kind of playing with that. So um, definitely something else uh, that we could get in there and, and uh, add to our uh, regime of practice. Um, Animals are another great one uh, subject matter to to play with this. You know, looking at say a quadruped leg, a hind leg, um, to see what those volumes might look like, and getting more familiar with that without the fur on top. And and uh, so there's there's plenty of reference out there for that. Especially I mean, if you have an animal, cat or dog, that's great. Um, you can kind of see what they you know, just go and look at them, take pictures of them, annoy them. Right, um, so that you can uh, um, have some reference for for those things as well. I would say you know humans obviously are at the, the top of the pile for things you should be practicing because you tend to do a lot of character designs as a concept artist. Um, even if you're doing environments, a lot of the time you're trying to stub in humans um, for scale or something like that to, to fill the scene. You want to know kind of how things look or should look and how they work. Uh, but after that, animals, of course, uh, you'll see a lot of dogs and cats because they tend to be domesticated animals. And so in the hierarchy, they're a bit higher and you see a lot of horses. I mean, it seems like every game that comes out, I mean, just playing The Last of Us, there's a horse, right? Of course there is. The Witcher, uh, there's a horse. I'm sure there'll be a horse in um, Cyberpunk. <laughs> It'll be a mechanical horse or something like that. Um, but, you know, you start thinking about the... Uh, subject matter that comes up a lot so it's best to maybe work on on things like that also you know challenge yourself with like a uh a sea enemy or some weird uh, marine animals that are, are less uh common uh just so that you can throw a wrench in the works and and challenge yourself but those other ones if we get a good handle on them then uh it's likely that you're going to encounter that as a task at some point as a concept artist and and then you can uh, feel maybe a little bit more at ease because you've actually practiced that and you kind of have the memory recall now of some of those shapes. Um, so how many of these would I do in a day if I were practicing it? Um, I'd probably do, uh, I'd warm up with like an hour of this stuff. Um, if I were just practicing and not having to kind of talk to the stream, um, I could go a lot faster, right? I can make a lot more mistakes and, and go off to the side and, and kind of figure out forms uh, a little bit. Um, the speed's going to be uh, increased for sure. So as long as you're not distracted by other things, um, you know, an hour can be quite a bit of time. Uh, even if you didn't have an hour, just as much, as, as, much, as much time as possible per day to be kind of cementing these things in your head or at least tuning this, right? The, the hand-eye coordination. Um, I think over time, as long as we were doing it all of, a lot, uh, you're gonna see that gradual kind of increase uh, in quality in your work and the confidence in drawing even, right? So try and set some, side, uh, some time aside for it. <clears throat> um, and I, I guarantee you, you'll notice a difference, right? I mean, even just in chat, um, who was it here? I think it was Chris. Yeah. Uh, that was, you know, you felt like it turned out better once you exercise a little bit. Because the other option is, is that you don't exercise and you just hop into asset development just completely cold 
right? Not warmed up and, and you're kind of, you might be struggling a little bit and then you have, you think, you know, well, I got to get this work done. It's not looking great because maybe you didn't warm up with it. So, um, food for thought, you know, I would definitely try to make some time for any sort of sketching, but we can be a bit more targeted about, about those things. And then even between last week and this week, just using different methods of, of, um, working through, uh, the sketching practice, right? Blind contour, I still love is, is one that kind of just really, really depends on you starting to make that kind of blind connection to your hand uh, over time. So, but these are some other good ways that you guys can practice that stuff. So again, yeah, try it out on your own often and uh, you can pop back on the chat um, next stream. Tell me how it went and uh, otherwise, uh, We'll, we'll put a pin in the stream there for today. Just some chill Monday life drawing. Um, and yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming, everybody. We'll uh, <clears throat> be moving on next week, I think, to looking at some angle of alignment, direction, thrust. So uh, just a preview of what I'm talking about there is sort of how the hips on her are say pointed more down towards the ground than straight across or upwards, right? How uh, her chest can seem like it's rising up towards the sky rather than pointing across or down towards the ground, right? So just different alignments in the body to, to take a look at. Um, and, uh, and so we'll, we'll kind of start to understand that maybe a bit more complex than, than some of these other ideas, but getting an idea of, uh, what we should be looking for when when drawing the human body how it naturally sits in weight so look forward to it okay <clears throat>